G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and in today's video, we're going to be doing a tutorial and focusing on the NVIDIA broadcast application and how you can create your own virtual green screen with your camera and your NVIDIA GPU on your Windows based PC. And so you can go from something that looks a bit like what we've got going on now to something that looks a bit more like this, which is very, very cool and doesn't cost you anything as long as you've got those things that I just mentioned. If you have any comments or questions about this video, let me know down in the comment section. If you like this kind of content, and you want to see more content like this, hit the like button, get subscribed, and let's begin. So let's get started and talk about some of the requirements that you will need on your PC to make this possible with the NVIDIA Broadcast app. Um, taking you over to the NVIDIA website here, I'm going to leave all of these links down in the description just in case you want to go back to them and check them out in your own time. But if we scroll right down to where it says the requirements here, you can see that you need an RTX GPU um, 2060 or better, um, 8 gigabytes of RAM, of RAM or, or higher preferably, um, and CPU, an i5-8600 or a Ryzen 5 2600. So these are both CPUs with six cores, and I mean the AMD one has six cores, 12 threads. Um, but I guess what they're saying here is maybe a quad core CPU is not going to be powerful enough to drive this application. Uh, for the NVIDIA drivers, this is the versions that you will need or higher. And you can actually click on those links on the web page and that will take you to that particular version you can download. Um, operating system, Windows 10 64-bit, so 32-bit is not supported, and an internet connection during installation. Um, at the very, very top as well, you can see that this was published on September 17, 2020. So it's possible that since then that, you know, the minimum requirements has changed a little bit, um, but take this with a, a grain of salt, I guess is where I'm getting at. Now, the GPU that I'm currently using is an RTX 2070 Super with a Ryzen 9 5900X, so plenty um, of CPU and GPU power there with 32 gigabytes of RAM on my system. So this is going to be, I guess, an example of the best case scenario. Um, and the camera that I'm using is a Sony A7S II DSLR camera, which is a couple of thousand dollars. Um, but you can also just do this with any webcam. Um, if you've got a Logitech Brio or a Microsoft Live Cam or any other webcam you've got, um, they will all work perfectly fine. It doesn't have any requirements there. So any camera you can uh, get your hands on will definitely be um, possible to use this application. So all we need to do now is basically go ahead and download the application, which I've already done. I've just downloaded it to my desktop here. And then once the app is installed, you've got the NVIDIA Broadcast shortcut on your desktop. Once we launch the NVIDIA Broadcast app, if we bring that up here and we'll just get rid of Chrome for a second, you can see I've already gone ahead and sort of preset this up for you guys. So you want to choose here in this camera uh, camera area where it says beta, I'll just close that as well. Um, you can choose your source. So I've got two cameras. I've got the Pengo 4K Grabber, which is a capture card for my DSLR camera. And I can choose the resolution and how many frames per second. So I've chosen 20, uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second. If I want to go ahead and switch that to my Brio webcam, just so you can get a bit of a comparison, you can see obviously it's going to be a lot different. Um, this is the Logitech Brio webcam. Again, 1080p, 60 frames per second, and you can just switch your inputs around really, really easily using the application. But we'll switch back now to the 4K grabber. Now we should see my DSLR come back, and then we've got the effects area. So you've got background removal, which we've turned on. If I turn it off, it obviously brings the background back into frame. Turn it back on again, gets rid of the background. Very, very cool. Um, you've got performance and quality. So what that actually does, if we look at um, not device manager, but task manager. We can see here that the GPU um, is currently getting used and we've got 25% usage right now. Um, we're also recording in OBS using the NVIDIA NVENC encoder. So take that into consideration. The CPU, not really much use right now, five or 6%, but that's a cost across 12 cores, which is, you know, maybe still a little bit high, um, but 7.4 gig of RAM is being used just by using this app and by recording in OBS, so quite a bit there. Um, if we change it to performance mode, we might see that this GPU number for the percentage there might drop a little bit, but not too much. Um, you can see that on, where are we, on this side though, that this chair 
does pop back in here. Um, if I just move my arm up, it's sort of, you know, it's trying to figure out the scene and everything else. Um, if I put it back to quality mode, I wonder if it still does that. So, oh yeah, it still comes back. Um, quality mode versus performance in this particular situation with this camera. I don't know if it looks that much different. If I click performance, that chair though is actually just slightly popping into frame. If I go back to quality, it completely gets rid of it. So I guess the difference here is I guess performance is really focusing on trying to free up as many resources as possible on the GPU and maybe the application will run or your games or your screen recordings might run a bit smoother. If you put it onto um, quality mode though, you can see that it does a really good job of getting rid of everything. And it's only when I start moving my hands around that other things come into frame. If I put it back into performance, you know, things are coming straight back into frame very, very easily, very quickly. But so cool that this application is completely free. And as long as you have those, um, I guess, hardware requirements, um, it's a very, very cool effect to use, especially if you're someone who's streaming or maybe creating tutorials in Windows, um, is very, very cool. And it makes, I think, the content feel a lot more professional. And it means you don't have to have this huge green screen in the background taking up a lot of space. Now, beyond background removal, there are some other cool effects that you can do. So you can do background blur if you want to do that, uh, background replacement. So if you want to put an image, so if you want to maybe put a wallpaper, um, you can do that. If you want to put, you know, anything there, you can definitely do that. Maybe your company logo, um, maybe, I don't know, a, a graphic that might show you that you're in a, a different place or something like that, whatever you want. Um, background removal, obviously we've talked about that one already and then auto frame, which I think is really cool. So it kind of does a digital zoom. And if I move my head around, it sort of tracks me virtually and tries to keep me in the frame. Um, you can obviously see how much it's going to, you know, how, how it's going to work depending on how much zoom you apply. But that is actually something that's pretty cool as well. Um, if we want to, we can actually add an, add an extra effect. Um, what's the last one? Video noise removal. So video noise removal. Let's switch to maybe my Brio and let's see how that looks. So this is the Brio, pretty normal. That's strong. This is weak, strong, weak. It doesn't really do too much. Um, let's go back to the Pango again. It's gonna be way better on this one maybe. So strong. Weak. Maybe in this environment, it's actually not doing too much. Maybe in your environment with your lighting conditions, it might be a bit different. But one thing that I thought was really cool is that you could add background removal and then add a second effect and do, for example, auto frame. And we'll turn that one on. And now, you know, it's going to track me as I move around. And I think that's very, very cool that you can just do, you know, multiple effects. If you scroll down, I think... Yeah, two effects is the limit here. Um, so, you know, you can play around with this as much as you want, but we'll turn auto frame back off. We'll actually remove this effect altogether and we'll just leave it on background removal. So again, using 25, 26% of your GPU. Um, let's see now how it actually performs when you're actually playing a game. I play Warzone quite a bit. I usually average around about 100 frames a second at 1440p. Um, so let's see how it actually works and how it impacts performance uh, when we play something like Call of Duty Warzone. All right, so we're just currently in the lobby, just waiting for the game to start. And you can see that the GPU is currently getting about 99% of usage. Um, up in the top left, it shows us how frames per second being around about 55, 56. And I can definitely tell that there is a bit of latency and the game is not performing as it usually does, um, which is in a way not expected. I mean, I wasn't expecting the game to run absolutely flawlessly, um, but we went from a drop of about 100 frames to around about 50, um, just standing still, not doing much. So you know, in the aeroplane here, it's going, or helicopter, I should say, it's dropped down to about 35, 36. Usually I'm getting around about 60 or 70 at this point, it even dipped down to the high 20s then. Um, so really not ideal to be running the broadcast app plus recording, um, or streaming, uh, plus, you know, the game. This is a really, really high demanding game. 
I think other games, you know, like Rocket League, maybe Valorant, um, will be a little bit less demanding and probably won't have that issue as much. Um, but if we jump out of the airplane here, you'll see that, you know, this GPU is just pinned at 99% at load, just getting smashed, just trying to keep up. Um, bear in mind that we're recording with the NVENC encoder on the GPU as well. Um, so, you know, this GPU is de definitely getting a bit of a workout right now. And there is plenty of, I guess, lag and, um, you know, there is definitely some issues here with the recording as well. So, considering that my system is quite, you know, high-end and, and definitely does a, a pretty good job most of the time, uh, the GPU is definitely sh you know, showing its signs here. Um, maybe the 3000 series GPUs will perform a bit better. Um, let's shoot this guy in the head. Don't know what he was doing, just sort of standing there. That's pretty... Uh, pretty strange um but overall i mean the game feels like it's still playable but i wouldn't say that the recording would be or streaming would be uh advisable on this sort of current setup i'm sure maybe if i made some tweaks and dropped the settings down um in obs that might help what we might do though is just switch to the broadcast app and let's change it to performance mode let's see how that goes let's see if that makes any difference we'll minimize broadcast Go back to the app here, or game, I should say. Mm, still not great. I don't know if we gained, maybe gained about 10 frames. We're now hitting about 70 frames a second. Definitely feels more playable. But in terms of like how it's going to look for your viewers when you're streaming, uh, or if you're creating videos or gameplay videos, um, I don't know how that's going to go. I think it's going to depend on the game. So what we might do is we might quit this game, maybe launch something else a little bit less demanding and see how it performs then. Okay, so we fired up Worms, which is not as, uh, I guess, as intense as something like Call of Duty Warzone. Um, and I mean, this game is still, you know, I think um, something that I would expect everyone to be able to run in even a basic computer. We do have the settings absolutely maxed out, but the GPU is still sitting at about 95, 90 per six, 95 or 96% usage um, whilst doing this recording using the application with the green screen. Um, and, you know, I definitely think that this is going to be the kind of situation where I think NVIDIA broadcast is more focused on, you know, if you're creating tutorials um, or maybe playing very, very, very simple basic games, maybe eSport games, um, Depending on your particular setup, though, it might, it might be better than mine. I don't know. But the NVIDIA Broadcast app is a completely free application to use. Um, it harnesses the power of your GPU to do um, this virtual screen replacement. And, I mean, if you're you know, someone who is streaming or making a lot of tutorials, um, teaching in a classroom environment or anything like that, um, I think that this is a great application that nvidia has put out there and depending on the content that you're creating i think it is definitely something that's going to increase the quality and hopefully uh you know have people sticking around for a little bit longer now the last thing i'm going to show you is how to add the nvidia broadcast app to obs and you can almost use this as a guide on how to use it with something like Zoom meetings or any video conferencing app that you might be using, Google Meet, for example. So you can choose the NVIDIA Broadcast app as your camera source. Um, so really simply in OBS, in the sources section, uh, OBS, by the way, is a screen recording application. You can hit the plus button and choose your video capture device. So once we click that option there, um, you'll have an option here, and there's me again, hello, um, in the device section to choose your camera. So you can obviously just choose a physical camera, like your Brio webcam, but we actually want to have the camera application running in the background, so you can actually see it down in the bottom right, um, just down here in the taskbar, it's actually just running in the background. We're going to choose the NVIDIA Broadcast app, we're going to choose our, our resolution and our frames per second, and we're going to make sure that matches uh, what we've got here as well. So Pengo 4K Grabber um, is our source, our physical source. How many frames per second? We're going to choose our effect and quality. And this is what you're going to be doing here in selecting is choosing the device. NVIDIA Broadcast is the application and then pressing OK. And that means that your capture device is the app, which is, I guess, in a way, passing through the camera feed and adding that effect to it. So that's how you set it up in OBS. 
if you're in a application like um, Google Go, uh, Google Meetings or Zoom or anything like that, you're just going to choose instead of the camera, the name of the camera, you're just going to be choosing NVIDIA Broadcast as your camera source and that's how you'll be able to get that effect um, on your video meetings as well. So very, very cool. All right, guys, so that's the tutorial. I hope this uh, guide gave you a bit of an idea on how to use the application, how it impacts your performance, how to set it up with your web camera, and, you know, maybe sparks an idea, maybe a way that you can use this application in your recordings, your, your streaming, um, what kind of content you're creating is gonna be up to you. But I think that this is something that is definitely going to increase the quality. And like I said before, having hopefully people stick around for a little bit longer. So get creative with it. Um, let me know down in the comment section how you are planning to use it. If you like this video, chuck it a like, get subscribed, um, be sure to check me out on Discord. Feel free to chat or ask any questions there. Catch up with me on the live streams and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.